Hello and welcome to TA Academy. In today's lecture, we'll talk about magnetization curves and saturation as part of my lecture series on electrical machines. So in my previous lecture, we solved a problem in which we found out the magnetic flux through a ferromagnetic core using the magnetic circuit equivalence. That is, we made an electrical circuit equivalent of a given magnetic geometry and found out the flux through the circuit. So in that lecture, we assumed that the relative permeability is constant with respect to the applied magnetomotive force, which in general is not true because we have the phenomena of saturation. So in today's lecture, we'll see how saturation affects the relative permeability for ferromagnetic materials. So let's assume that this is a ferromagnetic core and I wrap n turns of a wire around it and connect a DC current generator I to it. Now this current will cause a magnetic flux phi to flow through the core and if I were to plot phi in Weber's versus the magnetic motive force which is the source so remember we use the symbol F for the magnetic motive force which is equal to n times I in this case if I were to plot a relationship between the two, it would look something like this. So in the beginning, it is linear with respect to the magnetomotive force. But as the magnetomotive force is increased, saturation starts to set in and the slope of the curve decreases. And eventually, after a certain value, there is very little increase in the flux as a function of the magnetomotive force. So this region after which the slope of the curve almost becomes horizontal is known as the saturation region and the point at which saturation starts to kick in is known as the knee point. Now this plot was between the flux and the magnetomotive force, but we know that flux is equal to B times A and B is equal to mu times H, where H is equal to Ni divided by LC. So in other words, the flux is directly proportional to the magnetic flux density and the magnetic field intensity H is directly proportional to the magnetomotive force. So I can make the same plot again. Let's plot it here. Of the magnetic flux density given in Tesla versus the magnetic field intensity given in ampere turns per meter. Always keep into consideration the units. So ampere turns divided by the mean path length in meters. So this plot will be identical to the plot of flux versus the magnetomotive force. It will have a linear region, then a knee point, and then the curve will saturate. Now since the relationship between B and H is governed by this parameter mu, where mu is equal to mu naught times mu r, mu naught is the permeability of free space, which we know is a constant given by 4 pi into 10 raised to the power minus 7, 
So the only variable which changes with the magnetic field intensity is mu r. So mu r is nothing but the slope of this curve. So if I were to take two points here, h1 and h2 with corresponding flux densities of b1 and b2 and if I were to calculate the slope here this slope will be equal to let's say mu r1 so here you can see that a small increase in the magnetic field intensity leads to a considerable increase in the magnetic flux density However, if I were to take two points here, let's call them H3 and H4, then the increase in the magnetic flux density between B4 and B3 is negligible because the slope mu R2 is significantly decreased. So since electrical machines and transformers depend on the magnetic flux to develop voltages we want the flux to be as high as possible so it is usually operated very close to the knee point however we run the risk of going into saturation if we increase the magnetomotive force further and move into the saturation region So let's look at a typical magnetization curve. So this here is the magnetization curve of steel and here around this point you can see this is the knee point. The curve is linear up to this point and from here on saturation starts to set in. So in the previous problem that I solved, you can see that lecture by clicking the link in this video, we assumed a constant value of the relative permeability. But in my next lecture, we'll see how we can find the value of mu r from a curve like this and find out the actual value of the relative permeability at different values of the magnetic field intensity. And if you like this content, then please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next lecture.